Welcome to Electron Line, and now let's talk about the Hubble Space Telescope and Cepheid variables. Remember that Cepheid variables were these variable stars that had periodicities of 1 to 100 days. And we also discovered that the periodicity had a linear relationship with their luminosity or their magnitude. So Cepheid variables vary from minus 2 to minus 8 as their absolute magnitude. That's pretty bright because compared to the Sun, our Sun is like almost a plus 5. So these are variable stars. They're stars that are like as much as 10,000 or more times as bright as the Sun. And their luminosity or their brightness depended upon the number of days it took for the periodicity to change because they become brighter and dimmer and brighter and dimmer and so forth anywhere between 1 and 100 days. So all we had to do is measure the periodicity of the Cepheid variable, put it on the graph, and read off how bright they were. And then we tried to measure their brightness as the way it appeared, their apparent brightness. We compared it to their absolute brightness, and from that we should be able to figure out the distance to the Cepheid variables. Now, if the Cepheid variables are embedded in a galaxy, and we take a number of readings over number of Cepheid variables and average it all out, that would give us a fairly accurate reading to the distance of that galaxy. The next thing we do is we measure the recessional velocity of the galaxy. How do we do that? Well, the velocity is equal to the speed of light times the change in the wavelength caused by this, uh, this uh, recessional velocity divided by the original wavelength if the galaxy was not changing. And we do that for a specific spectroscopic uh, value of, for example, hydrogen or some other gas that we know the exact value of. And from that, we can find the exact velocity we then put that on the Hubble curve, for example, we have the velocity on the vertical axis, we have the distance on the horizontal axis, so we use the distance from the Cepheid variables and the recessional velocity from our calculations, we start putting on these different values, and then we connect them all like that, and now we have a nice slope that represents the Hubble constant. Well, we did that for about 800 Cepheid variables in as many as 18 different galaxies as far away as 65 million light years. Remember, without the Hubble constant, we couldn't measure Cepheid variables that far away. One good example is M100, a very large galaxy in the Virgo cluster, 56 million light years away. We're able to detect 19 Cepheid variables in that one galaxy alone, giving us a very accurate reading as to the distance of that galaxy, and then also by measuring the velocity very accurately, we're able to come up with a very nice curve for the Hubble constant. In the end, with all this work with the Hubble telescope, the Hubble constant came out to be about 73 kilometers per second per megaparsec. Now that took a while because the early readings gave us a very different value, but over time as we get more and more accurate measurements and put all the data together, the value started merging down to, to 73 kilometers per second per mega per sec, which is now one of the premier values for the Hubble constant. It may still change a little bit, but we're getting closer and closer to the exact value. Remember, once we know the Hubble constant, we can then look at any galaxy in the universe, measure its distance by measuring its recessional velocity, putting it on this curve, and then finding the distance to that galaxy. Just absolutely amazing. Something Hubble started over 100 years ago is now one of our premier tools to find distances to galaxies all over the universe, and also to find a very accurate measurement to the age of the galaxy by simply taking the inverse of the constant, one over age is the age of the universe in seconds. So it's absolutely amazing. So that's how we figured it out after 100 years of hard work, but we're not quite done yet. We're not done until we get even a better value for the Hubble constant, so research will continue, experiments will continue, until we get that thing nailed down as accurately as we can.